فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد This inshallah ta'ala is the second lesson and we were still in the muqaddimah the introduction Today inshallah ta'ala I'm going to be ibn Allah be speaking about the method and the way that I will be explaining this kitab um bulugh al-maram but what I mentioned last lesson or last sit was that the sharh is only going to be a babun min abwabihi just a chapter from the chapters of bulugh al-maram and it is bab al-siyam the chapter of fasting and as you're all aware of adatul ulama the norms and the way that the scholars were is ifradu hadha al-bab bi ta'lif fi kitab mustaqil the scholars they would specify this chapter kitab al-siyam by itself and they would explain it and a lot of scholars did that this chapter kitab al-siyam the ahadith that are in there balagha ad iddata ahadithih sittan am sittatan wa 40 hadith it is 46 hadith how many hadith are we going to be taking in the sharh of ahadith al-siyam min kitab bulugh al-maram it is 46 hadith the manner inshallah ta'ala that i will be going through and the way inshallah ta'ala that i will go to, that i will be explaining is as follows qasamtu al-kalam fi sharh i categorized the explanation that i'm going to be doing of kitab al-siyam أما أحاديث الصيام من كتاب بلوغ المرام I categorized it into two I categorized it into two رواية ودراية رواية ودراية and as you're all aware of and we previously we studied in the شرح of كتاب نخبة الفكر للحافظ ابن حجر العسقلاني what it means رواية and what it means Diraya and اختلفوا the scholars they differed في حد كل منهما the definition of both of them each one what is the ma'ana of riwaya what is the ma'ana of diraya they differed but what is most common amongst them well mashur indahum the definition that is common amongst them is that riwaya means what riwaya means dirasa to hadith to study a hadith. ما بعينه من حيث روايته وضبطه وتحرير ألفاظه. Is that you study a hadith in terms of its narration. You also study in terms of its wordings and its harakat. This means riwayatan. So you remember you study the hadith its chain. And you also study the hadith in terms of its, its wordings وتحرير ألفاظه. And diraya means what? دراية ميز القواعد التي وضعها أئمة الحديث لضبط الأحاديث ومعرفة أحوالها وأنواعها وهو ما يسمى بمصطلح الحديث علم الدراية ميز وات The science of حديث مصطلح الحديث الدراية ميز مصطلح الحديث But that's not what I mean here That is not what I personally mean in this definition of رواية والدراية Because as I said before the scholars they differed on the definition of riwayah and diraya. What I mean by it is مَا يُسْتَأْنَسُ لَهُ بِمَدْلُولِ اللُّغَوِي لِلْدِرَايَة which is that which is in accordance to the Arabic language. That diraya means that I'm going to be speaking about the uh, fiqh 
and the masail, the jurisprudent rulings that are in the hadith. Now we're going to research ma yumkin istimbatu that which is possible for us to extract min al fiqh wal masail, and that riwayah, inshallah ta'ala, is going to be what? And that the riwayah is going to be ma yata'alaku bi takhrij al hadith wa dirasati asalidi wal hukm alayhi. We're going to grade the hadith, grading the hadith, studying the chain of narrations, placing a ruling on it. That is what is meant by riwayatan. And that's what I mean, inshallah ta'ala. So let me repeat that again. Riwayatan is going to be what? Riwayatan is going to be ma yata'alaku bi takhrij al hadith wa dirasati asaridihi al hukmi alayhi. We're going to study. Authentication of the hadith and its gradings and studying its chain of narration. And diraya is going to be what? Ma yata'alaku bi fiqh al hadith. That which is connected to the jurisprudent rulings that are pertaining to the hadith. Wa ma yumkinu istibatuhu minhu min al masail wal fawa'il. To extract from it the fiqh and the jurisprudent rulings that are in the hadith. If I now, inshallah ta'ala, go in more details. If I now go in more details of explaining the exact step by step way in which I'm going to explain the riwayah is as follows. Point number one. This is what the riwayah which I've now explained to you is if Hafidh ibn Hajjah rahimahullah ta'ala إِذَا عَزَلْ حَافِظُ الْحَدِيثَ لِمَزْدَرِمْ If Hafidh ibn Hajjah attributes and he places a hadith to a particular source. For instance, if he says Rawahul Bukhari, or he says Muslim, or he says Ibn Majah, or he says Mutafakun Ali, or he says Rawahul Khamsa, or he says Rawahul Sab'a. If he says that, for instance, I am going to, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to speak about the hadith from that same source Hafidh ibn Hajar mentioned. The source in which he attributed to it, I'm going to follow that same source. So the wording can be in correlation to the wordings that Ibn Hajar rahimahullah is looking after. But if he attributes this hadith to more than one source, if he attributes it to what? To more than one source. Then I will then, inshallah ta'ala, classify it and grade it and study its chain based on what? بِحَسَبِ مَصْطَلَحَ عَلَيْهِ عُلَمَاءِ الْحَدِيثِ فِي تَرْتِيبِ الْمَصَادِرِ الْحَدِيثِيَّةِ I'm going to follow the sequence in which the scholars of hadith would follow when it comes to organizing the books of hadith. They would place who first? Al-Bukhari, rahimahullah. And then they would put second who? Imam Muslim. And then they would place third who? Abu Dawood. And then fourth, Al-Tirmidhi. And then fifth, Al-Nasai. And then a sixth, Ibn Majah. This is how I will follow the sequence. That is, that is if he places it in more than one source. That's point number one. Point number two. If the hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim, both of them, or it's in one of them, it's either Bukhari or it's in Muslim, then I would inshallah ta'ala let it be at that point and I would just place the ruling on Bukhari if he mentions it's in Bukhari or if he mentions it's in Muslim and it's Muslim, if he mentions it's both of them then I'll mention both of them and I won't bring anything outside that. Why? Khashyat al-Itala. Concern that it may become long if we go and bring this hadith from other narrations. And also, Bukhari and Muslim suffices us from any other narrations. Bukhari and Muslim will suffice us from any other narration, or each and every one of them will suffice us from having to look into any other sources. If Hafiz ibn Hajar does not mention a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, if he doesn't, if Hafiz ibn Hajar does not mention a hadith 
that is not in Sahih al-Bukhari al-Muslim, then at this point, I'm not going to be like as I said before, سَأَتَوَسَّعْ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ I'm going to go in فِي تَخْرِيجِهِ مِنَ الْمَصَادِرِ الَّتِي غَزَاهُ إِلَيْهَا I will go in depth and in details in grading the hadith and studying its chain in the places which he attributed to it. Inshallah ta'ala. So this explanation min nahiyat al-riwayah is going to be detailed. It's not going to be surface level. And just give you the final conclusion by saying it's hasan or sahih. La. The riwayat and the asarid are going to be studied. And the ilm al-hadith which we took, took in uh, Madhumat al-Bayquniyah and that which we took in Nukhbat al-Fikr, we're going to do it tatbiqi. We're going to apply it on this book, inshallah ta'ala. That is what is, that is the issue of a riwayah. That is the issue of riwayah. The explanation of a diraya now, when I'm explaining it from the angle of diraya. And I already told you what diraya means. Diraya is ma yata'allaqu bi fiqh al-hadith. That which is connected to the, the fiqh of the hadith. Wa ma yumkinu istimbatuh minhu min al-masail wal fawaid, inshallah. At this point, the things that I'm going to focus on to allow me to bring out the fiqh in the hadith is number one. Number one, the strange words that are in the hadith, غريب hadith, and the mufradat, the terminologies that are in the hadith which are strange, and the sentences which are unusual, which require clarification and explanation, then inshallah ta'ala I'm going to do sharh gharibi al-hadith wa mufradati. And uh, that would require for us to then go back to kutub al-lugha wal gharibi al marufa and one of the books that are min ajma'iha, that's min ajma'iha, the one that is the most comprehensive of those books that allows us to find those terminologies which are strange, is the book Al Nihaya fi Gharib al Hadith by Ibn Athir rahimahullahu ta'ala. And also, of course, Ma'alim al Sunan by Al Khattabi, Fathul Bari by Ibn Hajar rahimahullah, and Sharh Imam, Imam Muslim, his Sharh of Sahih Muslim and other shuruh al-mukhtalifa. The second way that we're going to extract fiqh from the hadith is that I'm going to do ta'rif. I'm going to talk about and explain a very small summarized explanation bi kulli rawin every narrator. O alamin or every scholar yaridu fil bulughi which Ibn Hajar mentions rahimahullah. So every narrator and every, so that involves who? That involves the ruwat of the hadith, the narrator of the hadith from the sahabas, those who are not famous, those who are not famous, and the tabi'in in which he is going to mention. Sometimes he's going to mention some tabi'in, ahyan, not all the time. I'm going to speak about them, inshallah. We're also going to speak about al mubhameen أو المهملين الذين يريد ذكرهم في متون الأحاديث. Places where Ibn Hajar when he says that a man asked the Prophet. We're going to look for who that man is. He's مبهم. And we're going to mention and get it from the book written by Imam Al-Khatib Al-Baghdadi رحمه الله. And that also involves and that also involves بعض الأئمة غير المشهورين and scholars who are not famous in which Hafiz Ibn Hajar um he would mention them when he is grading a hadith, such as Kal Uqayli and Ibn Adi. And other than them, in which he mentions, I'm also going to give a biography of who they are. That's the second point. The third point is I've also given consideration to Runitu Bidabti. I've given consideration to the tashkil and the harakat that are going to be on the hadith. And also the i'rab, the grammatical analysis, ma ashkala min kalimat al hadith wa al fadi. I'm going to do i'rab, grammatical analysis of the words of the hadith, the, the wordings of the hadith in which ambiguity lies. And the understanding of the hadith here cannot be understood unless it's grammatically understood. 
which inshallah ta'ala you will all see. The uh, fourth way which I will be doing the diraya is if the hadith has a sabab, if the hadith has a uh, a reason and it has a story behind it and half of the hajar he didn't bring it to summarize it I will bring it inshallah ta'ala I will what? I bring it because of that which is going to be in it من الفوائد benefit في فهم الحديث وتصوره in understanding the hadith and perceiving the hadith you see also I will mention that أشهر المسائل الخلافية. I'll also mention the most famous matters of dispute amongst the fuqaha that are connected to the hadith. I'm going to mention them. How am I going to do that? And how will I tackle that? I will do that by, and this is what point? It's the fifth point under diraya. This is the fifth point. أتناول دراسة أشهر المسائل الخلافية المتعلقة به. I'm going to deal with the most common masail, the fiqh issues, the most common ones, I'm going to bring them. How am I going to bring, bring them? And how are, we going to, how are we going to explain it? This is how it's going to be done. Number one, how am I going to deal with the masail al fiqhiya that are most common, that a lot of people ask questions? Huh? How, do we, how are we going to deal with them? We're going to bring... عرض أقوالي وآرائي الأئمة الفقهاء. I'm going to bring all of the أقوال and the, uh, statements of the فقهاء in this issue. And I'm going to mention the محل الخلاف where the dispute lies. And all of the statements are going to be attributed to the person who said it. منسوبة إلى قائليها. The statement will be attributed to who said it. If it's from the Sahaba, من الصحابة فلان and فلان and فلان from the Sahaba said this. Or if it's the students of the Sahabas, I'll also attribute their statements to them. Sa'id ibn Musayyib said this. Uh, so and so said this. And so and so said this. I'll attribute each statement to which tabi'i who said it. Or if it's the a'immatul mashhoorin, the most common known a'imma, la siyama, especially a'immatul arba'a. The four a'immatul arba'a, the four imams that are followed. Abi Hanifa, Malik, Shafi'i, and Ahmed. And also, I'm going to bring each and every one of them their evidences from the Quran, from the Sunnah. And if there's a mas'ala, then the mas'ala, if it's ijma', then I'll bring the ijma' that's in it. Or if the mas'ala is based upon qiyas, then I'm going to bring the qiyas in which every person is arguing about or arguing against. All of these is, do, is done in a what? Munaqasha, discussion between both parties. Naam. And that is if there is a need for it. In ihtaj al amru ilayhi, if it requires it. And then, inshallah ta'ala, and then what I'm going to do is at tarjih, bayna aqwal al a'imma. Then I'm going to, which is the second point. The second point in bringing the masail al khilafiyyah. And discussing it, the first one I mentioned, which is to bring all their opinions and where the khilaf lies, attributing everyone to their statement and that which they said, whether it's a sahabi, whether it's a tabi'i, whether it's from the a'immatul matbu'een, such as Imam Abu Hanifa, Malik, and Shafi'i, and Ahmed. The second one is, which I'm going to do, inshallah ta'ala, wa sa'uhawid bi'idhnillah al-kareem, at-tarjih bayna aqwal al-a'imma, to strengthen between the statements of the a'imma. في كل مسألة in each matter مبينا ما هو الصواب clarifying that which is correct والأقرب للكتاب والسنة and that which is closest to the kitab and the سنة but in what way على طريقة السلف in the way that the salaf were like in what على تعظيم النصوص to respect the text to respect the text من الآيات from the verses of Allah سبحانه وتعالى والسنة الصحيحة وَالْآثَارِ الثَّابِتَةِ From the Kitab of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala and the authentic transmitted traditions of the Prophet and also the Athar of the Sahabas and Tabi'een. Also, trying hard and striving in what? To 
bring the conclusion and the khulasa, summary, in this issue and leaving off ijtihad and qiyas when there is a text there. Leaving off ijtihad and qiyas when there is a text there. لذلك الإمام الشافعي رحمه الله he used to say إذا صح لكم الحديث if a hadith becomes authentic to you عن رسول الله from the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم فخذوا به take it ودعوا قولي and leave my statement ولذلك ابن حبان ابن حبان in his in his الإحسان he mentions he said للشافعي إمام الشافعي had ثلاث كلمات three state statements three things that إمام الشافعي said he said, ما تكلم بي أحد في الإسلام قبله. No one said these statements before him in Islam. The first one is this statement of his that I just mentioned. إذا صح إذا صح لكم الحديث. If a hadith is authentic to you, عن رسول الله from the messenger, فخذوا به take it ودعوا قولي and leave my statement. That's the first. The second one is that Imam Shafi'i said, ما نظرت أحدا I never debated anyone قط whoever it was except فحببت أن يخطئ that I wish that he got it wrong. No. I've never debated a person in which I loved for him to do a mistake. It would never happen. The third one is that Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah said is وَدِدْتُ أَنَّ النَّاسَ تَعَلَّمُوا I wish that the people learned هذه الكتب these books وَلَمْ يَنْسِبُوهَا إِلَيَّ and they did not attribute anything to me. I wish the people took my knowledge and they did not attribute anything to me. I wish. Ikhlas and the sincerity of this noble Imam. And Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah he was born the year 150 and he died the year 204. He only lived for 100, he only lived for 54 years. Imam Shafi'i only lived for 54 years. And he has a madhab, madhab that's followed for that small years of his life. How did he get to that level? Ikhwani la shakka wa la raib. It's ikhlas, sincerity that he showed. Coming back to the point that we were talking about is also I will be relying on مستعين بفهم أهل الحديث المنقول عنهم and I'm also going to rely on the understanding of the people of hadith how they understood it how am I going to know the أئمة hadith the way they understood a hadith by looking at their chapterings in their books how they chaptered it in their authorings and the books that they wrote I'm going to look at where did they place this hadith and under what chaptering did they put it because there's thick and there's Knowledge in that. And the scholars that I'm going to rely on are from the mutaqaddimin and the mutaakhirin. And we don't believe Babul Ijtihad is closed. So that allows us to take from the mutaqaddimin as much as we can take from the mutaakhirin. Kabnu Khuzayma, Wabnu Hibban, Wabnu Al Mundir, Wabnu Hazam, Wabnu Abdil Bar, Wabnu Sheikh Ulisam Taymiyyah, Wabnu Tilmidhu, Wabnu Al Qayyim, Wabnu Tilmidayhi, Wabnu Rajab Al Hambali, Wabnu Kathir. وغيرهم and other than them and also the kalam of the ulama al muasirin also the statement of the scholars who are contemporary and those who have recently died Sheikh Abd Aziz ibn Abdullah ibn Baz and also a Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymin and a Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al Din al Albani and other than them الذي عرف عنهم الإنصاف those who have been known for their Insaf wa taharri dalil to strive to the evidence. Walau qala fa dalika madahibuhum al matbu'a rahimahum Allah jamiyan. And they're striving with to the evidence, even if it opposes their madhab. They will go against the dalil because of their fairness towards the haq. Also, inshallah ta'ala, I will be ibn Allah al Kareem be sometimes speaking about. مسائل عقدية عقيدة related matters and we won't leave that if it presents itself and it's there and also مسائل أصولية matters pertaining to أصول الفقه I will mention them and I will stress on them if they are matters which are and last but not least last but not least I also mention في نهاية كل مسألة من مسائل الحديث after every hadith after every hadith, I'm also going to mention بإذنillahi الكريم المراجع The references in which if you want to see more of this issue and you want to research even more, I will mention it inshaAllah ta'ala so the student of knowledge can go and research it for himself even more. I will conclude there inshaAllah ta'ala for today. 
Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.